But that's beside the point. Let's go back to talking about the firm. So we set it up last time of thinking about a firm. The firm is going to maximize its profits. And we said, well, its profits would simply be PF of x1 up to xn. So that's the amount of output they produced. And that's the production function f. And remember, this production function itself is the result of an optimization process. How do I produce the most outputs from a given collection of inputs, right? That's, and there's some interesting economics that you can build behind a production function. And you know, a number of papers that actually build a production function from more primitives. You know, there's papers you can talk about how you might build a Cobb Douglas production function from underlying primitives that are, are kind of more simple. But anyway, so that's going to be our, that's the revenue side. And then we got the sum of wi, xi are the cost of the inputs, i equals 1 to n. So that's the firm's maximization problem. And it's like, I mean, the cost side of it is very much like the utility maximization problem. The big difference, as we talked about last time, is that one, this is you know, that the output here is not ordinal, it's cardinal. Secondly, it's measurable. And third, it can be traded for the inputs, right? That is, you have a choice of, of, of the, and that's going to turn out to matter a lot for the sum of the results that we have. Well, the first order conditions are going to be P times partial F partial X1 minus W1 equals 0 down to P partial F partial Xn minus Wn equals 0. So there are n first order conditions corresponding to the uh, uh, maximization with respect to each of the different inputs. And remember, these are partial derivatives, so these are holding constant the uh, usage of other inputs. So we can just write this out as P partial F partial X1 equals W1 down to P partial F partial Xn equals Wn. These look a lot like what we had in the consumer problem, right? That is, it's pretty much the same idea, except for we don't have that multiplier lambda. That is, we don't have that multiplier on those prices. And why don't we have that multiplier? What's taking the place of that multiplier? It, it, it's P. It's P because, remember, lambda was the margin utility of income, right? It was how much utility you could get for, for income. P is the price of output. W is the price of inputs. So this implies partial F partial X1 equals W over P down to partial F partial Xn equals Wn over P. So that would look just like the first order conditions we had before. These were like margin utilities, except for we have a 1 over p in place of lambda. And that's this transferability we talked about last time, right? That is, because I can trade inputs for outputs in the market, it's like if I could sell my utility, right? If I could sell my utility to other people, the, person, the, the person's problem would come back to being a production problem. The fact that the utility wasn't tradable really was the difference of what we had here. Okay? All right, so P is kind of taken.